this. Okay. So yes, I'm Mandy and a little bit about me. I'm currently an engineer of cloud automation working on a DevOps team at Verant. I enjoy writing code, specifically automation scripts, and I am a certified AWS developer associate. So I've been working in the cloud space for a little over two years now. And before that, I was working on hardware with the Department of Defense on Navy ships. So um, a little bit about what Rob was talking about, the simplicity of uh, implementing Cloud Custodian. It, I went from not knowing Terraform, not knowing cloud, being like, what is EC2, to implementing these policies and saving millions in like a couple months. So it's quite fun and it's very doable for somebody who knows how to code a little bit. Today, I'm going to explain Varen's cloud cost situation before C7N, the results of implementing Cloud Custodian and what that meant financially. I'm gonna review a couple of Cloud Custodian practices and share the seven policies that saved Varen millions. And then I will show off a Datadog dashboard for live monitoring of Cloud Custodian in our environments. So my team owns over 100 AWS accounts at Varen. Before Cloud Custodian, Varen was one of AWS's top paying customers in the top customer service bracket of AWS. So we were paying out multiple million dollars a year. And we didn't know out of all the accounts and all the regions, what was there, what was turned on, what was being used. So we had a lot of manual optimization. So for example, somebody messaged me, hey, according to our bill, our cost is way up for EC2 instances in this region, in this account. Why is that? Oh, they're all, there's a bunch of ones that are turned off. Can you hear me now? Used. Yes. Uh, I don't know what uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, you had a question? Sorry. Go ahead, Mandy. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so I would write a script to terminate those unused instances. And then um, that's okay if it's just one account and one region. <laughs> but it turns into a lot of manual work for maintaining a cloud environment in a cost efficient way. So when we implemented Cloud Custodian in April of 2022, we saved around $6 million from the policies that I'm about to show. And we also got bumped from the top paying customer service bracket to a significantly lesser customer service bracket. So the savings from implementing Cloud Custodian are ongoing. These are the seven main policies I implemented. Some were broken up into two policies, marking, tagging, and then removing after some time. So we have EBS, deleting unused volumes and snapshots, and upgrading GP2 to GP3. We also have EC2 instances, terminating unused instances, AMIs, deregistering unused images, um, EIPs, releasing unused ones, and ELBs, deleting unused ones. So like Varsha was talking about optimization, we mainly use it for garbage collection. And if the resource does not have an unused available attribute, we determine whether it's being used based on anything attached to it and then remove it after a set of time. Varen's Cloud Custodian workflow comprises of Lambda functions that run daily on all of our accounts and all regions. Variant acquires multiple companies a year. So when we acquire a new company, their AWS accounts come with them. To ensure a smooth integration into the uh, Cloud Custodian workflow, we run a dry run of all our policies on that account and then send the report over to the owner. So if there are resources on the report that they don't want Cloud Custodian to clean, then they add this CC exempt tag to the resource and then all of our policies only capture resources where the tag is absent. So resources with the CC exempt tag will be exempt from any cleaning by Cloud Custodian. And then once all important resources are tagged, we add that account to the list of resources that gets cleaned daily by Custodian. Resource owners can also add the exempt tag at any time and Cloud Custodian, Cloud Custodian will ignore that resource. In addition to our customer managed tags on the left, uh, for example, the CC exempt tag and the Kubernetes cluster tag, we also filter out AWS managed tags, which look a little different in the code. Um, they're created by AWS to filter out important resources. One thing that I use to increase efficiency when writing multiple policies in the YAML um, 
is a, the YAML anchor and reference functionality. So this is a basic function of YAML that implemented that I implemented to reduce the duplication in our code. So these are primarily used to reference common definitions across multiple policies. In this case, we have a standard notify action and a standard Lambda mode. So these two standard declarations are written here under the var section. And then later on, we are referencing them so that we don't have these huge chunks of code in every policy. So on the left, we see the policy with anchor without anchor references, which is 29 lines. And then on the right, we have the policy with the anchor references, which is 14 lines. And by using this, I decreased my policy document by 112 lines of code. So it's quite efficient if you're deploying a bunch of lambdas the same way and uh, notifying the same way. The first function deregisters AMIs that haven't been used for 90 days. So this is a basic policy straight from the documentation. Just add, we just added the um, AWS manage tag. So resource AMI, we're filtering out some tags and then checking the image age that's greater than or equal to 90 and that the image is unused and then deregister it. The next policy for elastic load balancers is an example of a resource that needs multiple policies to determine how long it has been used. So notice the made status tag under filters. That is the tag that Cloud Custodian adds to a resource when it's marked when it marks it for deletion. So an example in the text box below, made status, and then that's the content of that tag, which includes the date that it will be deleted. So on the left, we're looking at ELB. And if the list of instances attached is empty, the ELB is not being used. So action mark it for deletion in 30 days. The policy on the right searches the ELB resources. And then under filters, we make sure the CC exempt tag is not there. And if it is marked for the deletion operation, Cloud Custodian determines the date it will be deleted from the contents of the tag. If that date is today, the ELB will get deleted. We also have a policy that checks if the ELB is tagged with a main status tag, but is in use. So it got marked by Cloud Custodian and then it got put to use. That policy will untag the resource so that it will not be caught by the delete marked policy on the right. And that goes for all the policies that have a marking component. That's just the standard that Cloud Custodian recommends. So there's technically three policies involving each of these resources getting tagged, but that untagged policy doesn't get applied very often. So I left it off for simplicity's sake. We upgraded our EBS volumes from GP2 to GP3. This policy checks the EBS resources under filters. If the volume type is GP2, the CC exempt tag is absent, the volume is modifiable, and the age of the volume is greater than three days. So it's not a random spin-up volume. It will most likely stick around for longer. Then under actions, we modify the volume types to GP3. For EBS snapshots, under filters, we ensure those tags do not exist, and the age of the snapshot is greater than or equal to 90 days, and the snapshot is not being used, and we will delete the snapshot. For EC2 instances, this looks very similar to the EBS snapshots policy. We're checking the EC2 resource, ensure the resource is not exempt, and then that the state of the instance is equal to stopped. Then we're checking the state age, that that's greater than or equal to 30 days, so that it has been stopped. It's been in the stop state for 30 days, then terminate the instance. For elastic IPs, Walking through the policy on the left, the filters we use, we ensure the EIP isn't tagged with CC exempt or made status tag yet. Um, no instance IDs are associated and no association ID listed on the EIP, meaning that the Elastic IP is available and not attached to any instance. Then tag to be released in 30 days by the policy on the right. And then last but not least, this is our biggest saver policy for EBS volumes, walking through the policy on the left. Under filters, we ensure the volume is not tagged by C7N already and also doesn't have those customer tags. And the attachment list is empty, meaning there are no instances attached to this volume, so it's not being used. Then mark it to be deleted in 30 days. Then in 30 days, the delete marked policy calculates based on the made status tag that today is the day that this resource will be deleted. 
This is our Datadog dashboard for Cloud Custodian where we can watch the cleanup in real time. So our Lambda functions are logging to CloudWatch and then we have a Datadog forwarder from there. So the upper left hand corner, you can see the summary of the resources cleaned with the time block within the time block that we're looking at. And under that, we have the number of resources per policy that are getting cleaned with the pie chart equivalent on the right side of the dashboard. Next to that, we have the resources per account. So we can see the greatest offending accounts under that is the pie chart of the same. Bottom left corner is the resources per region and bottom right corner is listing any errors Cloud Custodian throws. And we have a monitor, a Datadog monitor on that as well. And then the upper right corner is a detailed message on what specific resource IDs are removed. This is what also gets sent through the notify action to the resource owners. <laughs> Quick summary, I've explained Varent's cloud cost situation before Cloud Custodian being one of AWS top paying customers. And after Cloud Custodian, in addition to millions of initial savings, we got bumped to a lesser customer service bracket for AWS giving ongoing savings. I explained how we use Cloud Custodian Lambda functions running through every account and region and how we import new accounts. I shared some YAML best practices, described all seven main policies that contributed to much of our savings and showed off our Cloud Custodian Datadog dashboard for watching real-time savings. So thank you all for logging in. I'm so happy to be here and this has been very fun. I'm open for any questions if anybody has any and you can find me on LinkedIn. Great, thank you so much, uh, Mandy. I think there are a lot of questions for you. Okay. Um, I think there was, uh, I think we just scroll up. Like people, your examples, people are finding really useful for sure. Um, how do you identify resource owners with acquisitions? Great, so we notify to an SNS topic and then we have, um, we have subscription filters on our topics. So if an owner wants to be notified of actions in an account, they will say, hey, send it to these emails. And then in the subscription filter for the SNS topic, we um, filter out in the message. So the message of the contents in the upper right-hand corner, it says the um, account name and the account number. And so we have in the subscription filter for SNS, the account number and then the email. And so then I have a, another Lambda function that, that says the, okay, if this finds the um, account number and the, the email attached to it, then send it to that owner. So it's not technically every resource is tagged with an owner because we have a whole lot of resources and a whole lot of accounts, but we, figured out a way to do that through SNS filtering. Great. Um, I think there was a question around, uh, what do you use the mate status tag? I think that was answered. Unless you want to add something to that, Mandy. Sure. So the mate status tag is Cloud Custodian's way of tagging a resource so that Cloud Custodian knows how long it's been tagged for. So um, like I said, a few slides ago. Some resources like EC2 have a state age. So this says how long the EC2 has been in the stop stage. The Elastic IPs, since it doesn't have a state age kind of um, attribute, we have to figure out, okay, right now it has no instance IDs or association IDs, so it's not being used, tag it. And then if it continues to not have anything added to it, then delete it. So that's what the um, mark for OP and the made status tag is just the Cloud Custodian default name for that. You can have it be a different named tag too. Great, I think you're right on time. Thank you so much. Great.